I'll start with students first. I do an initial intake session to get to know the student because I really need to see if we can connect. And I want to make sure that uh, that relationship is going to work. Sometimes I will just do one session um, where I talk to them. I talk to their parents. I run the assessment. I speak to the teen for about an hour, hour and a half. And then I have a parent session after. Um, and sometimes we decide, you know what? We're great with the strengths. We're great with this framework. Um, we're good. We're going to take it. We're going to take it from here. Or I don't see that the, the teen is really invested, right? Melissa talked a little bit about this. It has to be, I have to see some sort of intrinsic motivation that you want to understand your strengths and that you want to work on your goals. If I don't see that, I will say to the parent, I don't think they're ready, right? I don't, I don't want to waste your time and money, I'm right? If, if they're not ready. Sometimes the parents, of course, know their kids better. And they're like, no, they're working with you because I know they need this. They just don't. And that's appropriate in certain situations, right? There's a lot of studies and data on how many coaching sessions um, it takes. When I had my executive coach as an adult, I worked with her for a year and then I worked with her for another year because there were some things after 50 years I'm working through, right? Weekly for um, a year or how I did it for a year and then another year. Okay. Yeah. With kids, it's a little bit different, right? I'm usually helping them get to the next stage that they're, that they're working in. But when I started working with uh, Melissa's family and we did uh, the one session, um, her, her teens are very different, right? So what her son needs is different than what her daughter needs. And that might turn into a different number of sessions. If we decide to move past the first session and there's some really some great things that we want to work on, I don't work uh, with anyone less than six sessions once a week uh, for six weeks um, because it's really, really hard to manifest change in less than that. Less than six weeks, um, I mean, yeah. Right? Because listen, your teen is coming to me at 15, 16, 18, right? And they've already, they have habits and behaviors that that are already instilled in them that I need to sort of unpack. And that takes a little bit of time, right? And then usually we we get to a good place in um, in six weeks, but there are other cases where uh, parents just decide to continue um, because they've seen uh, changes and we're just not ready to stop. Or um, being a parent partner and helping the student is is working and beneficial. So it's not so structured because humans are and human behavior is different, um, and and everyone is motivated in a different way. So you know what, um, homeopathy and and what you do, Sarah, and the coaching complements each other so well. And I know we've already talked about all that, but I really just wanted to drive that home that homeopathy can heal the the mental, emotional, mm -hmm. the physical, you know, hormone imbalances, gut issues, food intolerances. There's so much that homeopathy can do, but when the team isn't, what is my word? Not bought, maybe bought in. If they're not, if they're not understanding or seeing the benefit or they don't want to have the patience or the persistence to get there, then I think this is where you, what your services can shine. And, you know, really just thinking about health, this is where your services can really shine. And, but I know that you take it much further than that. You know, you're helping these kids get to the next level in their life, their goals. Um, some of these kids might not have even thought about what they want to do next. And you can, you're such an amazing question asker. Um, <laughs> you, you make people think about these things that maybe they haven't thought about. This is why I've, I've sent people to you because what I can see that homeopathy has this spot, but it can't take them to that you can, you can be that bridge that gets them. If they can use the remedies along with what they're learning from you, they can really get to that next. They can really run well, I think. Um, Absolutely. Same thing with spiritual, you know, spiritually, we, we can't run without the Lord. So, yeah. you know, homeopathy is not the miracle worker. Jesus. Right. right. So, I, I believe the Lord allows us to use the remedies to help along the way, but 
he's the answer. So sometimes I'll be in a consult and I'll see there's more to this than just a homeopathic remedy. And so um, I just love what you're doing. And I'm just so excited that we found you. Was it late last year or early? It was early this year, I think. It was early. Yeah, this year. I'm yeah just it was so early this year, I think February. Yeah. And I, I've seen, when we think about the remedies that uh, you're providing, and I see it in my kids, um, because my one son has has some major anxiety and there's different remedies that I have him on. I truly believe that when kids have proper nutrition and their bodies are functioning correctly, their mind, obviously, and their body works so much better. So when they're not taking their remedies or when they're not taking care of themselves, it's really hard for them to meet their goals. And it's really hard for them to talk to me each week because they're not sleeping. And it's hard because they... They're not taking their remedies for their acne. And then I get on the phone with them and they don't want to go to the dance and they don't want to meet their goals. And now we're behind because they don't feel good. And I think something that I've really, that's worked so well with us working together, which I've loved is connecting that when you take care of your body, you can meet your goals. So if you just eat, right, I tell my son this and you take your vitamins and you take um, these remedies for iron or depression or anxiety, and you feel better, you're going to show up better. And then you're going to be able to meet your goals. I mean, think about it. Is it even as adults, when we get in a rut, when we don't feel good, when we're overweight, when our energy is down, I mean, we don't have the mental capacity. We, we don't want to meet our goals. We're lethargic, right? We're just trying to get through the day and, and take care of our kids if we have them or not we're not meeting our goals either. So health is like at the baseline of, of all these other things, which why I think it's, it's so critical. And I've seen um, with your help, you know, in, in coaching other clients that you're working with from a homeopathic perspective, I'm always asking, are they taking their remedies? Because if they're not, it makes my job harder and it makes the kid's job harder. Um, because they're they're not going to feel good, and if they don't feel good, they're not going to want to want to excel to meet their goals. You know, that's what I love about that you're a parent partner. Because what I've been trying to teach my teen boys, especially mm -hmm. the boys, they're just like whatever. You know, she's just whatever. They don't really care. But then when somebody else from the outside comes in and says the same things that I've been saying. And then they're like, Oh, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. she, but you put it different, right? You're like, okay, you need to eat well, take your remedies, you know, go, then you'll feel good enough to go to the gym, to get strong, to get to the air force, you know, to whatever, whatever right. you connect those dots where all I'm doing with these parents is okay. This is what's happening. The, these are the remedies they need. And then there's nothing else I can do but you can come along and coach like, okay, let's connect these dots and let's get this in. It's right. And sometimes I'll say to them, right. On a weekly basis, how are you feeling this week? How is your sleep this week? And I, I send the, the teens podcasts and I'll send them short little, you know, snippets of memes and stuff. Cause they have like zero attention span. So I, of course I'm not sending them all these things to read. Um, like I would an adult, Right. Uh, but I send them things or TikTok videos or things that I know that are going to resonate with them. And if the following week when we talk or or when I'm texting them, they're like, oh yeah, no, I've missed my iron pill for four days. That's not on me. That's on you. So then I, then I ask a question, right? You talked about me asking questions and I say, oh, okay. Like no judgment. It's up to you to take it or not. Right. And then I just ask, well, how do you feel? And then they don't really think about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, actually, I haven't felt great. Yeah, I missed a day of school this week. Oh, then what happened when you missed a day of school? Yeah, I missed this. I missed it. And then I just keep asking. And then it's like, oh, yeah, intrinsic motivator all the way back to I let know, me just yeah. take my iron, right? Yeah. Or if, you know, if um so, uh, someone doesn't want to do their homework, sometimes I get really crazy. And I'm like, okay, so 
don't do your homework. What do you think is going to happen after that? Well, I get a zero. Well, then what happens after that? Well, then I'll fail the class. Well, then what happens after that? Right. And I just keep asking and they laugh because they're annoyed, but they answer my questions. And then we finally get to, oh, I guess I'm going to be living under a bridge in a tent. And I'm like, okay, like, do you want to change your goal that we've been working on for five weeks? Right. And then they just laugh and they're like, no, Sarah. Right. So I try to, um, again, I just try to meet them where they're at and I'm not here to judge you. Right. Eventually. I mean, you're anywhere between 15 and in your twenties, like at some point you have to take ownership and accountability, uh, for your own health. But I will say sometimes it doesn't work all the time, right? If they're not going to take their remedies and they're not going to, you know, uh, do the, do the little homework I give them and stuff, they're not, things are not going to change, but what's going to happen. And I've seen it is they're going to wake up one day and they're going to feel the pain of, I'm not talking physical pain, or maybe I am right with Melissa, what you do with them. And then they say, oh, Melissa and Sarah were right this entire time. It doesn't happen all the time because I, I I try to stay on top of them. Um, but it, it goes back to the intrinsic motivators.